Well, let's talk to Michael Schneider, the coordinator and publisher of uh, World Nuclear Industry Status Report. Uh, Michael, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. So President Macron has announced this uh, construction of uh, six new reactors with an option for another uh, eight, perhaps. Faced with global warming, climate targets, those uh, legally binding net zero targets in many countries, and this energy crisis, this is a sensible move, isn't it? Well, it really depends on, you know, what the reality of the feasibility will be. On one hand, six reactors doesn't seem that much because, you know, if you look at China, China actually started building uh, six reactors in the, in the single year of 2021. On the other hand, you know, France has been trying to build one single reactor since 2007. So if we're talking climate emergency... If we're talking time, uh, the question is what we can do now in the short term. And, and President Macron was very clear about that. He said what we have to do now in the, in the meantime is uh, energy efficiency with, uh, you know, a stiff target of reducing energy consumption by 40 percent by 2050, starting now and building out renewable energies where France has been lagging behind, the only country in the European Union not to meet its targets for 2020. So in the short and medium term, it will be renewables and efficiency, and we'll see what will happen with the nuclear program, because already now there are doubts within the establishment that the 2035 target, that's you know almost 15 years from now, uh, can be met. Can I ask you about that, that feasibility? I mean, as you say, it's one thing to uh, commission a, a nuclear uh, power station. It's quite another to build the things and deliver them. And in particular, why is it taking countries so long? I think China uh, knocks these out in perhaps 10 years. The French government, as you say, has taken, I think, 15. Why does it take so long? Can it not be speeded up? Well, there have been attempts over the years, and, and it's obvious, uh, you know, some countries like China and, and Japan, until the disaster started in 2011, had, uh, you know, record building times as low as four to five years. Uh, but you see one big problem that have all these, these uh, uh, construction projects have in common is to guarantee a very high level of quality. And quality control has shown that, you know, repeatedly there are problems with very simple things, it seems, like welding and concreting to the standards that are meet, ne needed in nuclear power plants. So that is the number one problem, uh, really, that we face uh, all around the world. I mean, if, if nuclear isn't the clear answer, I mean, wh what is, given the encircling challenges of uh, coal and gas and oil? Oh, well, the, the opportunities are there. And, you know, we have seen a dramatic sort of an energy revolution taking place over the past 10 years when, you know, the, the, the costs for solar electricity, for example, dropped by a factor of 10 uh, over that period. That is, a, that is a period while, you know, nuclear power plants were still under, under construction. The, the, single, the similar developments for, for wind power plants uh, that dropped by uh, by seventy percent in in cost, and you know it's like a it's like a playing a concert. It's not about one instrument. It's fine tuning all the instruments. So we need various sources of generating uh, electricity. And by the way, not only electricity, which is only about a quarter of the final energy that is consumed in a country like France. But, you know, provide the energy for transport, uh, for uh, the heating and cooling, uh, et cetera. And, and, you know, there's a lot of options out there today. If renewables and energy efficiency was so easy, why haven't more countries raced after it? The truth is, it isn't that straightforward, is it? Well, you know, it's a, a matter of how the energy policy strategies have been put together and there was you know a long time there was this dogma that uh, nuclear power is the only technology that provides an, uh, power 24 7. well we see now that you know in a country like france which is the highest uh, uh, level of uh, uh, nuclear power in the electricity mix 
it was highly dependent uh, in, in the winter, in the middle of the winter, on all neighboring countries because many reactors have not been operating as planned because they're getting old and maintenance takes longer than planned. So the idea of 24-7 is not reality anymore today. So in any case, we have to look at possibilities of, you know, uh, uh, juggling various options and make them uh, be uh, flexible. So flexibility is actually today the key term. Michael, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the program. Michael Schneider.